What's going on everybody? This is Bronco Juggalo and it is a Skinfully Sinful Saturday. We are doing Skinfully Sinful Slashers on Slashback Saturday. Now this is a slasher movie. The theme is slasher movies with lots of skin in them. Lots of gratuitous nudity, things like that. And my pick definitely fits that bill. I am doing the 2013, released by Wild Eye in 2016 film, Grime Wave. The third part in the Cockface Killer Trilogy. That's right, guys. It is time for Cockface Part 3. I threw up in my mouth a little. But I was in a crowd theater, so I had to read it. Hey, fuckers. Who the fuck gave them a camera? I saw this movie and now the government is watching me. My eyes! My eyes! Oh my god, my eyes! The single most reprehensible film I've ever seen. I, your kids are gonna love it. Why did I watch this? I have already come to you with Gore Face Killer and Gorgasm reviews. We are going to see how the third one stacks up to those first two films. Because they were both shit and we both know it. Before I get that far, though, I want to thank Danny B for sending me this movie. Thank you very much, bro, for hooking me up with this film. I've been needing to get it so I can review it. And, uh, yeah. I also want to give a big shout-out to Wild Eye. They are where it's at with Independent Horror. And they are an awesome company who has my back constantly. And I want to always have theirs. Once again, directed by Jason Matherian, Matherin, I don't know. The cockface killer stumbles across a drug. You know what? Who gives a fuck? It's a guy with a cock on his face, killing people with a dildo. And a whole lot of other depraved, nasty shit. So guys, by the third film, the formula of the cockface killer has worn a bit thin. The shock for shock's sake just doesn't quite hold up like it once did. Even though the first two movies were really, really bad, it just, it's gotten kind of boring. While this film actually does have structure, where the first two had none whatsoever, it just isn't really that funny. It goes for laughs and it doesn't get them. I did give a small chuckle at one little scene, but other than that, there really wasn't a whole lot going on here. I was kind of bored throughout the whole movie. I don't really, I'm not going to really go pros and cons. I'm going to tell you a couple things that I did like about the film. There was a really good scene with an umbrella. There was an umbrella kill that was really good. I liked that one kill in the movie. All the rest of them were kind of crap. I like how our main female protagonist at one point in time moves her skirt back to pull a knife out of her underwear. I thought that was kind of funny. And it did elicit a little bit of a tiny giggle from me. And the one other place, I know I said just once before, but there was two actually, I just forgot. The other place that elicited a little small chuckle from me is that the cockface killer does battle with a ninja in this one again. Where he pulls out a sword, and it literally is a giant dildo sword. And it throbs. And that got a small chuckle from me. As far as things I don't like about this movie, uh, basically just refer to my first two reviews. Because it's a lot of the same stuff. Uh, there were some things that I thought that just, I don't know, I, you could tell they were just trying to go for more of a shock and the kind of thing. There is a guy-on-guy blowjob scene that you can see. There is a female sex scene which you know if you're into that kind of stuff that's fine I have no 
I really don't care one way or the other what you guys do or what you your preferences are, your persuasions or whatever. I don't give a shit, you know, I really don't. Uh, but just, I just, it's not my cup of tea, so I just wasn't really into it. You know, and the gay sex scene stuff wouldn't be so bad if they weren't both fucking fat. Now, I'm a fat dude, and I have no illusions about what I look like naked. And, yeah, I don't want to see me rolling around with another fat dude on camera. Okay, that just brings up a really bad image in my brain. I'm very sorry. Uh, yeah, guys, this is definitely still a pass for me. But I will give it this. I think it was better than the first two films in this franchise. This one, at least, as I said, did have some structure to it. It actually had a script. Uh, there is a couple in this movie who is hooked up out of two different worlds. And the whole time they're trying to get down in the movie, something keeps blocking them. Well, they finally do get their chance sooner or later. You can tell that they actually tried to put a bit of a love story in this movie. They actually did give this one a storyline. Whereas the others just jumped chaotically and randomly from event to, from event, to event to event. So... I guess I should do a ranking video because I believe there's only three of these movies, huh? Yeah, I think there's only three. And maybe I will. Maybe it'll be my first ever wildlife franchise ranking. Guys, this is Bronco Juggalo saying check out Joe the Horror Man, the creator of Slashback Saturday. Check out everybody else doing Slashback Saturday. Check out Wild Eye releasing. And if Danny ever decides to bring his channel back, or if you see him in the Super Slash Brothers streams, give a big shout out to Danny Boy. He is awesome. I want to thank him again for sending me this movie to review for you guys. And I want to thank Wild Eye for being a very awesome company. And hell, I want to thank Joe for being my Slash Brother. This is Bronco Juggalo, signing off. Peace. Not a